The Thin Gray Line Collection, brought to you exclusively by LEOChallengeCoins.com. Collect pins, challenge coins, medallions, emblems, patches, and more at LEOChallengeCoins.com. Visit www.LEOChallengeCoins.com. Just recently, in a DUI jail intake room beneath a city hall, an officer's gun was taken by a 31-year-old suspect, and thank goodness the officers were not harmed. Hi, I'm Gary York, True Prison Stories. Please subscribe if you like this video. Now, here's the thing about what happened. The suspect was handcuffed behind his back when he took the officer's weapon in the jail intake room. And yes, we're gonna talk about weapons being inside a jail intake room and the different policies after I do this demonstration. I wanna to demonstrate to the folks out there that are saying, oh my gosh, these deputies shot and killed a man handcuffed behind his back who had no chance. Well, that's not true, folks, because the man was handcuffed behind his back and he still was able to get to the weapon. Now, we'll talk about weapons retention after this, but once the suspect had the weapon in his hand, he is capable of killing the officers and they can use deadly force. Now, I'm telling this to the people out there who think the police officers were wrong. And I want you to know that I've heard sheriffs and police chiefs say across the country on, on the news that if a gun is taken or a weapon is taken from their officer, they will be shot. Okay, so if you're going to take an officer's weapon, you need to realize there's a 99.9% .9 probability you will be shot. Now, for our demonstration, I have my Glock 40, which is my duty weapon that I kept after I retired last year. I am handcuffed now behind my back with the weapon in my hand. Now, I have cleared the weapon several times to make sure it's safe. Please do not do this at home or try this at home if you're not experienced with weapons. I even have the slide back right now. Now I'm handcuffed behind my back and I've just obtained this Glock 40. I'm going to slide the uh, weapon forward and now for those of you who think you cannot use this while you're handcuffed, I'm going to pull the trigger. I'm backing up, I'm moving, I'm aiming, I'm moving. And now I just pulled the trigger and shot the officer with the weapon I took from him. You can do all types of moves. Look, I can do this and fire. I can come around to my left side and fire. I can go back to my right side and fire. And I don't want to aim at the camera, but I can actually turn right around in front and fire. I can go backwards and fire. I can go down and fire. I can go up and fire. I can fire this weapon being handcuffed from any angle. So, for those of you who think a man handcuffed behind the back cannot kill someone with this Glock 40 or a, an officer's duty weapon, please think again because you can shoot any way you want from behind the back. Now we're going to cut here in just a second and I'll be right back to talk to you about weapons retention in the jail. Thank you. Hello everyone. You just saw a demonstration of how a suspect can take a weapon and shoot from the behind the back handcuff position. And um, I just want to say again, I'm so thankful that none of the officers were injured in the incident. This was in a... Uh, DUI jail intake room beneath the West Valley City Hall, I believe in Utah, but I'm not really here to um, talk about their jail. I'm talking about all jails in general. Now, I just retired from the Sheriff's Department, and I know that any time the officers pulled into the sally port with an inmate or a suspect, they always had to leave their weapons in the trunk of their vehicle and lock them in before they even removed the suspect from the back seat and brought them into the jail. 
Now, I don't know if being beneath the city hall was, there's a different scenario for these officers out there than in the, in the last incident that just occurred. But my point of the whole video is to show you that a handcuffed suspect, a person handcuffed behind the back, can still be very, very dangerous. Whether you're on the street, in the jail, or in the prison, always be alert and ready. You never know what they're going to do. These inmates can practice and practice and practice all the time doing things behind their back, even not having handcuffs. They'll be in their cells practicing on movements and things they can do while they're handcuffed. If they are the type of inmate that want to hurt you, they will practice these techniques, believe me. And then when they get back out on the street, they have learned these techniques from other inmates in the jail. And you must always be on high alert, even when they're handcuffed behind the back. This isn't the first incident where uh, inmates have attempted to harm officers when they're handcuffed behind the back. There are so many uh, of these incidents that have occurred over the years, so that's why you must always be careful. Now, I know in the jail that I worked at, there, there was no way you could get into the, to the jail with your weapon, or if you did, you would be immediately ushered out and told to put your weapon back in the patrol car. So um, I just think it's a great policy to never take your weapons into the jail for obvious reasons. You must have a lockbox outside the, in the sally port or lock them in your vehicle. And for what reason, I don't know these officers have their weapons on in the DUI jail intake room. So always be aware of your weapon, where it's at. And if you do have your weapon on, please protect it at all times. Face with your body away from the suspect with the weapon on the opposite side. And better yet, if you're in a jail, don't have the weapon with you inside the jail. Thank you very much. Gary York, please subscribe.